Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. All the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. This week is advancing the fuel system, but to be fair, I still don't have it operational. Uh, largely to do with fittings that I can't seem to get. But uh, other than that, I did advance it a fair amount. Let's jump back in time and we'll see what we got going. All right then, so the next stage in this ongoing fuel system project is actually disassembling the previous fuel system so I can start uh, to rearrange all the hoses and the filters. Anyway, you know what I mean? So let's let's get this one apart. Okay, that means emptying all the fuel lines of the existing fuel system. And I don't know if I've ever mentioned it before, but I hate diesel. Okay, so I have another huge advantage. As I mentioned, the fuel pump on the injection pump on the beta marine has a bypass valve, which I can open, which will allow me to blow out all the lines. In other words, if I take off the pickup line here and apply a relatively low pressure compressed air, we should be able to blow the entire system out back into the return. We should. All right, let's have plenty of absorbent pads around in case this gets messy. As well, I've set up my compressor on very low pressure, about five PSI, which should be plenty to blow this all out. Okay, let's see how this goes. All right, so as we apply a little bit of compressed air, we should hear gurgling in the tank on the return side. Let me make sure the valve is open on the engine. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's gurgling nicely. Again, no need for much pressure. I hear bubbling in the Raycor. Eventually it'll start to go faster and faster to the point where it's just sort of blowing and hissing and spurting because that means there's no fuel left in the lines. At which point I can apply more air because I know I'm not actually building up any pressure. There we go. That's done it. So. Stage one. Stage two is draining the Raycor. And uh, normally I would just take the top off and let gravity drain it, but because I'm already set up for uh, uh, pressure, I'll just use a little more of this beautiful pressure and uh, blow it out the bottom of the tank. Blow it out the bottom of the Raycor. Comes out pretty quick. Blows it up again. And uh, let's have a look at what the fuel has looked like so far this season. So you can see there's really no grunge and what there isn't is any water. Okay, but the rake core sealed up again. I can crank the pressure up a little bit because I want a little bit of velocity to blow uh, drops of oil out of the low spots in the hose. Because I know the pressure can't build up too much because um, there's no major liquid in there. I know I can give it a little more and make sure that it picks up any last little bits that might be in low spots. Excellent. And good morning folks. Well, carrying on with the fuel system, I didn't show you uh, finishing taking apart the old system because it just turned into an oily mess. Well, not too bad actually, it turned out really well and I didn't want to keep touching the camera with it. Anyway, everything is apart and cleaned up and I'm now in the process of laying out all the new uh, components. <laughs> Uh, that are going to go on the panel that has to be able to sit right there. And what I mean by right here is in this relatively small section of the uh, engine box. I want the two filters to be right there at the back end so they're easily accessible um, if I have to get at either changing filters or changing the valves to switch, select which tank I'm using for. Anyway, it's my ambition to put them right there and I think I can do it. So let's get going on that. Okay, so uh, my hope, I said, is to fit it in uh, within uh, a 15 inch opening, which is what we have uh, in the sole. And so the two ray cores, as well as the two main selector valves, as well as two electric fuel pumps, so I only have one right now, and all the associated hosing has to fit in that. And I want that to be as a serviceable unit. There's only a few hoses uh, connected to it, so it could all come out as one if it needed some major work. Otherwise, I want everything to be serviceable in place. 
Um, so the, the board that it fits on will be about this big. Um, the electric fuel pumps will sit right in here. Uh, fuel pump coming, fuel coming in, then pumped back up into the rake oars, similar on both sides. The outlets will feed up into uh, one of the two uh, valves here. This one's going to be the um, uh, supply side, and the other valve will sit right on top of it. And this will be the return selector. And I think that's going to work out pretty well. I have to make a block to support them out here. And everything is nice and compact and there's a few features that I'm really really pleased with one of them is that if you turn the ray cores in their mounts um, you can shorten the whole arrangement this way because the fittings come in quite a bit plus it actually works out quite well with creating some space so I'm actually quite pleased let's start to put it together <laughs> So here we go, here's the idea. Here's the board that's gonna go uh, inside the uh, engine bay. Now this is actually 18 inches wide and I have 15 and a half inches of opening, uh, but that's okay because I only have to get the filter to the point where the filter cover is within that 15 and a half inches. Uh, for instance, this fuel pump and other things can hang off the side, that's fine. So the basic layout is pretty much this block um, up here somewhere. Uh, centered on this, the two fuel filters, these are in the wrong orientation, go basically like this, right like that. The two fuel pumps, again I only have one right now, go on here. And the two, actually these go a little bit further apart, the two uh, fuel valves, uh, one of them with these uh, ears here, goes up here. And that is actually the return selector valve and the supply selector valve goes underneath in the same location and it can be swung down and around. Now there's a couple of reasons why I'm putting the return on top and the supply on the bottom. And one of them is because I don't want to ever be in a situation where the return is in the off position. Uh, because, well, as you can imagine, that would be pretty ugly. With the engine running, uh, there would be no way for return uh, fuel to come in and the engine would either starve or there'd be a burst. I know it would be bad. But the neat thing about making the upper valve the return, if I leave it in the off position, I can't close the hatch. So it'll easily remind me that I mustn't do that. Uh, in the case of the return side, I mean the supply side, I can, if I need to, turn the entire fuel system off by swinging this valve down. There's another reason to put this one at the bottom, and that's because I'm gonna have to put a T for a fitting for the vacuum sensor, which I think I talked about before, but this is the sensor for the vacuum gauge at the helm, and this needs to be between the supply valve and the engine, the lift pump on the engine, because it's detecting how much vacuum is being created by the lift pump, and if there's restriction in the system, basically in the filters. Cool, let's start to put this together. So let's mount the filters and they sit right underneath the block and um, leave a reasonable clearance here to the block so that when removing um, the filters, the cover, it's not too tight. But again, I have to leave enough room so that this fuel pump can sit down here and be serviceable by a screwdriver getting right down beside the filter here. These will actually uh, eventually be um, carry bolts, but they're going on with screws for now for the dry fit. Very nice. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's get these valves on. Now, the return valve is pretty much straightforward. It sits on top. It has uh, two fittings that go down and uh, one fitting that goes straight back 
which is the return and that'll just loop down and around and back to the um, from the uh, to the engine so let's put this on temporarily okay and the supply valve is a little more complicated it ends up down here as well uh, but it has a series of fittings on it because it's going to be um, needs to tee off for the uh, let me just see how far I can get this on here there we go just wind this on here of course there's no tape on here yet so these aren't accurate and there's a bushing in here to go from half inch to eighth inch and here is the uh, vacuum sensor which will screw right in there so let's put some screws in here okay excellent so the returns will be a little bit on an angle so the lines can go in behind the supplies can go straight because they go straight down and then loop up into the supply side or the output side there we go very nice very nice well all right then i am really pleased with the way this turned out i actually modified the way this t for the vacuum port worked out so it wasn't sticking up the front i didn't have to worry about it uh working into the handle so now the electrical connection is down and the actual uh, line to the engine is tucked in behind and that's perfectly serviceable that's easy to get a line on these are the two feeds um that come up to the valve so that's easy to deal with um, the main feed in from the tank to the top of the pump, this will come up here. And as I said, from the other side of the filter up to the T and then off to the engine, not the T, but the valve. And then the returns, the two returns from the two tanks will come up here. And the final return line uh, to the engine will shoot down and through there. Anyway, I am very, very pleased with this. It's compact, it's tidy, uh, it's not crowded, it's still serviceable. Just need to get the other pump. Uh, but I'm going to take it all apart now and get some oil on the wood so it's protected. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Okay, well that's drawing. I have a rather unpleasant task and that relates to the port tank that I need to connect, connect up now. And it relates to galling. Oh, the gall. Let me explain. Now stainless steel and aluminum are both lovely metals, but there's a few ways that they don't get along all that well together. And one of them is something called galling. Now, now I did a test fit into this um, no, this, yes, this uh, threaded boss the other day, and I did it with this stainless steel uh, nibble. Now, it's all very well to take stainless steel and do a test fit into aluminum, and if you're careful, everything is fine. However, stainless steel and aluminum have this strange phenomenon that they bite each other. Uh, in other words, they gall. So I had just hand tightened this in here, not even not even tight just a little bit and when i tried to wind it out again it locked and i mean physically locked into each other as if i welded it anyway uh if you can see what it did to the bit of stainless on here and i can tell you what happened to the threads in here just the very top two threads um are damaged and they need to be cleaned up and i'll show you how i'm going to do that a bit ambitious okay now the tightest way to clean this up would be with a three quarter of an inch um, pipe thread tap, uh, which I could just wind in there. It would clean the threads quite nicely and we'd be all set. However, I don't have one of those and I don't feel like buying one just to fix this. So there's a hack. Buy a nipple or other fitting of steel. In other words, um, black iron, same pipe thread. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a saw and I'm going to cut a few slots in it, thereby turning this tapered pipe fitting into a tap, or at least a rudimentary tap. And uh, I'll wind it into there and clean up those threads. Now, there'll be swarf. 
generic term for bits of metal. So I'm gonna have to take all these screws out, fasteners out, and do that off the tank because I do not want junk in the tank. So that I'm not dealing with an unwieldy mess, I'm gonna take the fuel sender back out as well. That's on there. There we go. Okay, so let's see if we can tidy this up. So I have uh, made several cuts into um, the threads of this uh, of this nipple with uh, my grinder, and that should make an adequate tap as long as I make sure I engage it properly. And there we go. That feels like it's about right. I'm going to use just a little bit of fluid film as a uh, cutting fluid here. Uh, those of you who are more experienced at machine work may say that fluid film is not suitable, but it's not going to be bad. Okay, that feels really good, but it's getting tight, so now we've got to move on to vice grips. For those of you experienced with tapping and dyeing, in other words, cutting threads by hand, there's a very distinctive feel when you know you're really in there in the right way. Now I know I'm pretty well down below where there was any damage, so that'll probably do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out. Clean up any swarf that's in here. Reasonable amount. And use the clean end of this to see how that feels now. Quite nice. That feels good. All right. Make sure the gasket is clean. All right then, back on it goes. There we go. Love it, love it, love it. And sorted. Well, hello there and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week. Let's get straight to the beer. This is uh, White Tooth Brewing and it's the Icefields IPA. Now this was a gift from a very nice gentleman who uh, arrived in the marina in his beautiful sailboat a couple weeks back and uh, he was from Golden and this is from Golden in British Columbia so uh, I'm very grateful for that. Let's see what we think of it. It's nice and cold. I'll pour it in my favorite glass. I don't know why this is my favorite glass. It just is lately. Well, we still haven't got the fuel system fully up and running. It's been quite a few more steps than I anticipated. And in fact, I've had to be pretty patient because I haven't uh, had access to all the materials and supplies I needed to finish it. And some other things were keeping me a bit busy. But anyway, we're very, very close and I'm very happy with how it's going. Uh, so, uh, ice field. Oh, that's really neat. They say it's a uh, hybrid Belgian inspired. Um, it's good. I really like it. It's great, actually. Mm. And I have a couple, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, well, uh, cheers. And uh, thank you very much for the gift of the beer. So, straight on to last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t-shirt is uh, Wild Horses Canada. So, Wild Horses Canada, get a hold of me, and we'll make sure you get your Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Cheers. Mm. That really is good. Okay, so no new patrons or PayPal this week, but off the Amazon wish list, another um, Holly uh, electronic fuel pump, which is so fantastic because I needed this to finish the project we're in right now. So it's perfect, perfect timing. And these are actually very sweet little electric fuel pumps. Um, I'm quite pleased with them. I've used them in a couple of applications. And I'm gonna put another one on my truck sometime soon. So really pleased with that. Again, it came without any sort of indication who sent it, so if you uh, could let me know who you are, I'd be happy to thank you properly. Cheers to you, anyway. That really is fantastic. All you need now is a word of the week, and well, yes, it's patience, because my patience was running a little bit thin trying to get this project done, uh, but that's what having patience is all about. Going really well. See you next week. Cheers.